Ayo, I hope this is not the start of this reading vlog. If it is, what up? It's your girl. Um, we've got one kitty here and one kitty over there. But I just ended last week's reading vlog, but before I forget and while these thoughts are fresh in my mind, Carlykins, Carly, Carly Kinney, I just did a delt day. Can you tell? I hate myself. Um, anyways, so I decided I wanted to try out a romance. Okay, book lovers, this cover has been going around. It's been making its rounds. I've been seeing it on Bookstagram. I've been hearing very mixed opinions. People freaking love it or people were disappointed by it. And my sister likes romance, particularly this author. And so I thought, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a try. I know she enjoyed it. And I wanted to read something that she has enjoyed recently. And so I started listening to that this morning after finishing my last audiobook. And I made it through the prologue, which is a, exactly 4% through the audiobook, and I DNF'd it already. So this is like my first June DNF. Um, I've had a lot of DNFs in the last couple of weeks, but I sometimes forget I hate certain things until I read them again. And she, my sister was sad, and she goes, did you not read the synopsis? And I was like, not really. Like, Or if I did, it immediately went out of my mind. That's the way my brain works. So, a couple things I absolutely cannot stand reading about. One, cheating. You guys know this from last week's reading vlog, and I forgot that until I read The Paper Palace. I literally despise reading about people cheating on one another. I just read One Italian Summer, felt like that, and then I just read The Paper Palace and felt like that. So, like, if it is about cheating in this format, it is not for me. Um, but, like, other unconventional relationship type of things can work for me sometimes. I don't know how to describe it. I really, truly don't. Open relationships work for me. That's a go. Uh, polyamorous relationships work for me to read about. That's fine. But yeah, the other thing, and I did hear people mention funny banter, enticing banter, and I was like, yeah, wait. I started reading it. And I was like, immediately, no. I immediately hate it. The very last thing, first of all, I don't like arguing and I don't like sarcastic banter in person. You might think that makes me boring. The type of flirting where people flirt with one another and are like rude to one another and they're like little jokes about being mean or rude, like gag me. I hate it. I have some friends that do that and every single time I'm just like, do, do you think that's cute or endearing? And if you do, like good on ya, more power to you. I'm so happy because like, you guys all stick together, there are people for you. If you are in the, I like to flirt by being rude and mean type of flirty humor, you know what I mean? Like you guys know what I mean. Never will you ever see me participating in that. Like I do not flirt by insulting people. I don't, like that's, that's, not, that's not my style, that's not what I do. And so I can already tell this banter where they don't like one another. They're just really like, oh, he's irritating. He thinks he's better than me. Like, and I am this and he is that. And I was immediately like, like that is why I put the Atlas six down because I couldn't stand the banter between these characters, like disliking each other. Like life is too short for me to personally read about people not liking each other. There's enough of that like in my own life. Like I just don't want to read about that. I mean, I can read about some horribly, terribly sad, depressing, triggering things. But people just wasting time bantering with one another. I don't even care how little it is. And when I asked my sister about it, I was like, oh no, is this like a hate to love? Or is there going to be like sarcastic? She was like, well, yeah, but the book doesn't like lean on that entirely. Like it's not a huge portion of it. And I was like, I don't care if it's this much of the book. I don't want to read about it. So that's sad. That's sad because I should have known better. Um, but I always forget that. And I'll probably forget it again. So you can point it out for me in the future if you would like to. Instead, what I have decided to pick up, let me go get it, is actually on my physical TBR. So, you know, we are making progress. I loved what this opens with. I'll read that in a second, I suppose. Ooh, this is a pretty naked book. So, I went with Woman Eating by Claire Coda because this is all the hype right now, all the rage right now, and I wanna read it before it is dead and done and nobody cares anymore. And also I have a friend in Patreon that just read it and enjoyed it, and so I just wanted to talk about it while it's fresh in her mind as well. So it opens with, all life to sustain itself must devour life. So this is about Lydia who is half 
vampire half Japanese, um, meaning her father was not a vampire, her mother was. And we really don't know too much going into this. She is taking this position as like an artist, um, like an internship type of thing. So she's moving into this apartment flat, whatever you want to call it. I cannot remember where this is taking place, a London studio. And she just has a couple interactions with the man that is renting her this space that are a little bit unusual. And she's spending a lot of time looking for pig's blood right now because that is what she chooses to feed on. And that's really the only mentions that we're getting thus far of her being a vampire, other than she did talk about this experience her mother had um, of eating human blood when she was pregnant with Lydia. And so she was wondering if that has like stuck with her. She has a very complicated relationship with her mother right now. Her mother is like very sick, um, I guess, and she had to leave her. I don't know much more than that, but I love this descriptions from Ruth Ozeki. Brilliant, tragic, funny, eccentric, perfectly suited to this particularly weird time. Serious issues of race, disability, misogyny, body image, sexual abuse are handled with subtlety, insight, and a lightness of touch. The novel is ridiculously suspenseful. So I don't know, um, it doesn't feel suspenseful to me yet, but I also realized recently that I enjoy books that deal with art uh, and artists in general. Maybe it's because I'm fascinated by art, maybe it's because I don't know that much and I'm not educated when it comes to art and artists and art history, all of these things. All I know is I love going to art museums, very much so. Uh, I cannot wait to go to, there's like a show in Detroit that we're gonna go to, the Van Gogh exhibit, and then in New York City soon that I'm really looking forward to. So anyways, I like things dealing with art and since she's an artist and there's definitely some passages about what art means in like metaphorical ways, comparing it to life and such. So I don't know, I find it interesting so far. I think I'm almost finished with chapter two. I'm listening to the audiobook through Scribd and the chapters are approximately an hour long each. So I think I'm, I don't know, maybe like 12% of the way through, just about to get to chapter three, which actually that might be part two. So yeah, maybe things will kick it up a notch when we get a little bit farther in, I suppose. I don't know, we'll see. I'm here for the ride, nothing wowing, not overwhelmed, but I'm just getting into it. So that is the audiobook that I decided to pick up since it was on the June TBR after saying, just can't do it for book lovers. Sad, but it is what it is. Ronnie, what are you getting? Okay, friends, bear with me. This might be a kind of loud update. I apologize, but you gotta get your updates in when you can. I just left the gym and actually the grocery store. I finally had a good leg workout. I had a terrible leg workout the other day because sometimes, you know you have those days when it's like somebody could breathe wrong and you're like, shut the F up. I will breathe fire on you. And um, if none of you guys feel that way, uh, I would like to trade lives. <laughs> You have to feel that way on occasion. I feel like everybody does once in a while. Anyways, that was my leg day the other day. So I had a good leg workout today. Great shoulder workout yesterday. But uh, I had to go back to Kroger because I needed that like vegan Parmesan cheese that I put on my vegetables because it makes my cauliflower rice and broccoli so tasty. Like so much better than without it. I use that in coconut aminos and it is perfect. Okay, but what did I want to talk about? I don't really have too many other thoughts. Um, about the Goddess Chronicles, so I'll mostly just update you guys once I've finished with that. But as far as 
Ramen Eating by Claire Coda, the audiobook I've been listening to. I'm quite far into it at this point. I think I might have just started chapter six. Um, so there's less than two hours of listening time on the audiobook. It's a really short book, about 250 pages, I think. And if I didn't already own the book, then I would DNF it. I am not really getting much enjoyment at all about, out of it. It's not a bad book. I want to like reiterate that and I do not think it's bad. I just think it's very okay. It's very three star-ish, even though I don't read my books anymore. And like I always say, life's too short to read three star books. Um, or I used to when I rated books. I will say that like it's nice that it's doing something different with a vampire story. It's very, very different from any other vampire book I have ever read. Um, but I don't necessarily think that it is doing something original with everything else. Like it said it was going to have like misogyny, disgust, sexism. And don't get me wrong, there is like a horrible guy who there's a scene where he like ropes her and um, you know, so there's commentary on that. There's also commentary on um, race because she is Japanese um, living in London and so there's a lot of commentary about her mom like wanting porcelain white skin and not fitting in um, and I would say like the majority of it really deals with her relationship with her mother because her mother has been left at this like home now to be taken care of all of her teeth has fallen out as a vampire so she has dentures and she doesn't remember who Lydia is and so it's very hard she kind of talks about how like when Lydia was turned as a baby and different things where we're obviously watching her work through her upbringing and she wishes that she had known her dad and that he hadn't passed away before she was born but we're not really getting any information about this art internship or what she's doing there's almost no dialogue and plot um, she's had one interaction with somebody that she like kind of liked uh, and I don't know it's just like a very bizarre I love quiet books I love slow books I love books that are like entirely in someone's head but this just isn't having original conversations and I've read in reviews and stuff that people think this even has like eating disorder commentary and I suppose that it does in a very 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 minor way which could be good for people who, who want to read about it but not have it be triggering. I don't think it was triggering by any means to me. So it's just like a bizarre experience because I don't particularly feel like this character is likable or unlikable. I don't feel like she's changing or growing. I think she's working through a lot in her head, but we haven't really seen any change yet as I'm nearing, like, I don't know, I've gotta be 60% of the way through the book. And there's pretty much no plot that's interesting. She met a guy who was a fan of her father's art and then, yeah, had this weird interaction with the guy that people said kind of like watch out for because he's a bit of a creep. So, yeah, it's just very much in her head. It's not really doing much of anything for me to the point where I'm actually really quite bored. So, yeah, I should finish this. I probably don't have, you know, an hour and 40 minutes left of listening time today because I have other things to do. Today is Friday. And then I generally don't listen to audiobooks on the weekend because Paul and I are busy doing whatever and uh, so if I don't finish it today it might be Monday before I do finish it but I am forever that reader who is excited about the next book I'm going to read before I'm even finished reading the one that I'm currently reading and that is why I love reading short books right now but I actually think I do have some book mail once I get home with these groceries I'll have to show you guys what it is if it is in fact delivered because I'm going to try to get to it this month and I don't know whether it'll be audio or physical, but I did order a copy of the physical book, so fingers crossed. The last page I just finished. For as I said earlier, Izanami is without a doubt a woman among women. The trials that she has borne are the trials all women must face. Revere the goddess in the darkness of the underground palace. I secretly sing her praises. There you go. Okay, guys. Okay, I just finished The Goddess Chronicle by Matsuo Kurino. 
And I will say it's definitely worth reading. It is not a new all-time favorite. It's not something I will shout from the rooftops about. I don't know, it was refreshing though. Like it was refreshing in this part of my reading journey to read this myth retelling translated from the Japanese talking about like the creation of the world, the creation of islands and gods and this almost like curse, the protector of the like underworld, the dark realm, like where the dead souls go and gods and goddesses and this small island life between these sisters and these family legacies. I think the characters were enjoyable to read from. I really just enjoyed that typical like fairy tale telling a story type of style because I haven't read anything like that in quite some time. So I think that it was really, it was like the perfect timing for me to read this. So like I said, all of my spoiler filled thoughts will be in my spoiler reading blog on Patreon if you guys want to check it out. But I definitely do recommend this myth retelling and I don't think it's anything like worth writing home about, but I do think it's worth the read if you're in the mood and you're interested. So now, before Paul gets home, I might try to watch Call Me By Your Name. I do not think I will have time, but I'm gonna try. Okay, I got my Sonny's merch in the mail. Love it, do we love it? It's so cute, matches, matches the house decor perfectly, right? Plants, green, aesthetic. Litfic, the favorite genre. Love it. I feel like I won't be taking this hat off, for a while. I love it. It is the best. Like how freaking cute. How cute. So this evening is shaping up with volume seven of Berserk, Heartstopper. These two could not be more different from one another. <laughs> Explicit content parental advisory and the most charming, heartwarming, sweet thing ever. Carly Cat's over here. Olive Fox is just somewhere nearby. Um, and yeah, I am almost finished with Woman Eating. Repping my Vader shirt to watch episode two of Obi-Wan soon. I have my favorite guest joining me. Owl Fox. Owl. Okay, just kidding. Just one of them. Okay, I'm cooking tofu, spicy chili tofu that I kind of just like made up the recipe for. Uh, I think I just finished episode six, perhaps, of Heartstopper. Meanwhile, reading Aphrodite made me do it, and holy, I just say cow for the sake of the vlog. I'm loving certain poems in this so much. This is the most fun vlog to me. Okay, we're going to the used bookstore to take back these books. In here, three big bags, two full Amazon boxes, it's gonna be sad if they take none, <laughs> but I think they will. And I want money back, not store credit, because I need to not get more TBR books. It is date day, but Paul has to go into a hospital to prepare some things for surgery for Monday. This is why you always bring a book with you. Wherever you go, the book comes to. Okay, while I'm waiting for Paul in the hospital, I thought I could give a little update on what I read. So this morning I finished Woman Eating by Claire Coda and I had very mixed feelings throughout this. I enjoyed it a lot when I first started reading it. I thought it was really interesting, a unique take on vampirism. And then it sort of went downhill. I thought it was very boring. The majority of it was set in her mind. And generally I love that. I think I'm repeating a lot of my thoughts at this point, so I won't bore you there. So a good chunk of the middle to near the end, I just didn't really care for. And then we get to a portion of the end where I feel like we really had the description of vampirism as a metaphor for an eating disorder. And that's when it really started to work for me because she had so many elements of how and being a vampire, not being able to eat human food and partake in social activities, she was missing out and being isolated from her culture, from society, from social events, all kinds of things, um, because she was not able to partake with other people in that way. And as someone with an eating disorder, like that is absolutely 
something that you suffer from when you're not able to eat the food with everyone around you because you feel very isolated and you can't partake in that behavior in that activity so it makes you feel left out and makes you not even want to go to certain things so like she had this whole exploration of that that i thought was really well done and it made me feel like there was so much missed potential with this book because i think that if more of the novel had focused on these things it would have just been much more enjoyable for me rather than it being such a small portion of it i didn't really care for the tiny bits of the romantic relationship she had in it i like the little bit i suppose how it ended and the like misogyny or sexism that was touched upon but the one other person i read this with that we pretty much both felt the same way. It was just very mediocre. It tried to do too much. And I think there was a lot of potential, but it just fell flat. It was almost like going down the checklist of things the author wanted to include, as in touching upon sexism and misogyny and belonging and culture and art and fitting in and like her Japanese heritage. I think she's Japanese. All of these things were included, but not really well done, which it's like, I'd rather see less be included included in the novel than to see things being done like halfway. So I can't say that I really recommend this book. Like I, I just really don't. It's not bad and I don't regret reading it. If I hadn't already owned the book, I would have DNF'd it, but I'm glad that I didn't DNF it because the best part was at the ending when it came to the conversation about eating disorders. I definitely found some of it triggering um, as somebody with an eating disorder, how she looks up so frequently, uh, like what I eat in a day of a model type of videos, like those types of things on Instagram and on YouTube to like see what people eat and are like starving themselves types of thing. But yeah, I mean, I do like the way it ended. I also think it was mostly based on the relationship and like grief almost that she was going through with her mother who was changing. Like her mother almost had this vampiric form of Alzheimer's where she couldn't remember things and she was very unhealthy. And so it was a lot about her unpacking her life and her memories with her mother, even though her mother is not dead. But there was a lot of questions that I don't really truly understand like how her mother became that way. So I really don't have bad things to say about woman eating, but I also just don't really have good things to say about it. And like I said, I don't feel comfortable like giving it as a book recommendation. I don't think it's going to be a bad time. I just don't want to put like my endorsement on it because I don't think it was a great book. And I think there's uh, a lot of missed potential and it could have done so much more and it could have been better. So that was the audiobook I finished up. And then I started listening to Animal by Lisa Tadeo after that. And I'm loving it so far. It's about this girl who I'm assuming is a bit younger. I, I haven't caught her exact age yet. Also, the audiobook is narrated by Emma Roberts, which is spectacular. Her voice is amazing for audiobook narration. And we're learning like very small pieces of the puzzle in a non-linear format, which is phenomenal as well. All we know is she's had this relationship with this older man from her workplace and she's not enjoying it. She's doing it for like the benefits of it and we find out that he's killed himself and then it's about her experiences of leaving after that so we don't know what led to that and i don't really know much about what else is going on but a lot of social commentary classism sexism like things like that evaluated which i obviously really enjoy and it's done in a way with like a lot of nuance and a lot of relatability at times so like this is an authorial voice that i am really enjoying reading from and there's way more um just nuance to the conversation and the discussion than like the last book that i listened to so i highly recommend the audio for it so far and i'll let you guys know when i'm farther and i've only read like 34 pages or something like that as I was cleaning the house this morning. So that's my current audio. And then I actually have a lot of things to update you guys on because last night I finished Aphrodite Made Me Do It and Berserk Volume 7, but I don't have those with me right now. So I will update you on those later. But the book I chose to pick up to physically read next is The Discomfort of Evening. So I read like the first 30 or so pages as I was doing cardio this morning and I was super hooked by it. And then I've just read like 30 more now, something like that while I'm waiting for Paul. So I'm approximately, I would say about 20% in the book. And it's about this family and they are very religious. It, it's very strict. It's very like, I don't think Puritan is the right word, but it's very strict. Like we are living in this world. We are not of this world. Very, very strict 
like rules about um, words you can't say and just like media and not using the internet because the internet is bad. Just a lot of superstitious like religious things. I love that type of religious commentary in my books. And so the son in this family dies. This little girl, our main character, Jazz, she wished that her brother would die instead of her rabbit. And then the next day her brother dies. And so we're just dealing with that grief and the loss of him. I find the writing to be very interesting. Like I really enjoy the writing. I can't put my finger on what it is about why. In fact, I have to listen to it. No, I'm reading this physically. I have to read it much more slowly. I don't know if that's with the translation or just the writing style of the author to begin with, but I really enjoy it. It, it, it causes a lot of thinking. It makes you really like, um, contemplate and evaluate what you've just read because there's no sentence in here that is at face value. Everything like has more depth to it than what you would first read at surface level. Like there's, there's more to every sentence I think. And it's very quiet day to day. And it's very like gritty, grungy, like the feeling of the devil all the time, like a very dirty, it's like a dirty, it's not afraid to go there and talk about bodily functions in very like normal explicit ways like this is what the body does yeah and it's just this girl and her trying to navigate through life now that her brother is gone and the rest of the family is depressed and things that are happening and yeah i'm very very intrigued and i've heard so many mixed things like honestly i've heard more people dnf this or not enjoy this book than people that actually liked it so i'm gonna keep going but as I said, it's quiet. There's not a lot that's happened. And I just really enjoy that type of book right now, I suppose. So I don't even really know what what it's supposed to be about, but it's very heavily commenting on religion. And that's, I think, the thing that I enjoy the most out of it so far. So those are my reading updates for now. And I will tell you guys about Aphrodite Made Me Do It and Berserk Volume 7 once I get home. And I'm going to read some more while I'm waiting for Paul in the car. Let me slam in one of these. <laughs> Okay, which one's your favorite? Probably, honestly, the Tangelo Tree. And what's this one? Uh, blueberry Lemon and Shandy. My favorite. This is Brother Benjamin. Benjamin. Triple yeah, like IPA. And this is a double percent. IPA. It's good. It's good. Yeah, but hers looks cooler than that. Basically. What is this place? It looks kind of close. My movie watching partner. Here comes another.
Okay guys, I feel like we have a lot to catch up on. So let's make some of this kind of snappy. I told you in the last clip that I finished up volume seven of Berserk and it's weird to be reading this again just because I've not read any fantasy lately and especially like battle heavy things. And this is a lot of fighting, a lot of battle. I mean, that's like <laughs> the majority of this I feel like, but I really liked learning more about Casca's character in this specific volume and her development with Griffith and then obviously with Guts. So those are the main characters that we're focusing on in this novel, they're in, in this manga and their interactions with one another. And I definitely need to start volume eight very soon. Of course, because they're trying to make such a point of this woman being a leader and her fighting amongst all these men, there's some rather disgusting, misogynistic, sexist comments, but I think that's like sort of to be expected of the men in this area. So, I mean, it makes sense that it's there, but yeah, I'm happy to be continuing on. I'm in my manga kick right now and I love it. The next thing that I loved was Aphrodite Made Me Do It by Trista Matir. I have to go through on my phone some of the pages that I so badly wanted to read you guys. I love this. They colored me pink and wrapped me in floral. They scrubbed the dirt from under my nails. They wanted you to believe that love is weak, that you cannot curse and kiss with the same mouth. They wanted you to believe that the, roof of, that the root of love is romance, soft and wide-eyed. See what they did to my stories, my temples, my statues. Regardless of whether you desire it, love is what sits at the core of the world. It is stronger than greed and hate and jealousy and pain. What brings us together will always be more powerful than what keeps us apart. I thought that was beautiful. And then there's a couple more I really wanted to find. This page I'm gonna post on my Instagram. It's page 31. It's obviously too long to read for you guys, but oh my God, I love that. And I think that you guys will enjoy that one as well. I love this. When I say I'm not looking for love, what I mean is I don't like losing the part of myself that disappears when I date other people. I don't know how to let another person touch me anymore. I'm okay with my body when I'm the only one looking at it. I don't know enough about healing. I had to step back for a while to get to know myself again, but now I don't know how to step forward. I worry it's safer to sleep alone. How can I possibly, possibly love someone right when I was raised with the worst example, which like I was not, but just in general, thought that was beautiful. I loved this one. I haven't learned how to heal. I've learned how to be alone. They're not the same thing anymore, but romance never gets to be the biggest part of my story ever again. There was one more I'm looking for. Ah, Athena and I wailed with grief on the day the news came of Medusa's death. That man held her head up like a trophy and I wanted to smite him for it. I wanted his head for my own. I wanted to open up the earth and let it swallow everything. The world was full of men who called themselves heroes for crossing boundaries, claiming bodies like prizes. The world still is. That one hit home and then there was one more. The last page made me tear up. May your life be filled with so much joy that you wish you could survive it. It reminds me of the Jaden song that I fell in love with, um, where you go from, I pray to God that I die in my sleep, and then it ends with, I pray to God I won't die in my sleep, because obviously when you go through that healing. So that was well worth the read, in my opinion, very quick to read, but if those things sound interesting to you, I would go for it. Um, before I get to the book, haul <laughs> we're having a little unhaul and a haul in this um an update i've made it to chapter i want to say at least 10 now um there's definitely been some parts that i want to underline from animal by lisa tadeo and this is i don't know i saw some criticism for this recently and i just think that so far it's something that i'm really really enjoying reading and listening to i should say as i said the audiobook narrator is doing a wonderful job she just has a great voice to listen to and I don't know what kind of twist it's going to take because we just learned her say like that's the new the, the time that I knew I would become a killer. And she's trying to train herself to become desensitized to like bodies and whatever by working at the hospital. But also I don't know yet how this man, Vic, that she's had the relationship with, like why he ended up killing himself. And she has this relationship where she's like learning about his wife and children and stuff like that. So the timeline's kind of all over the place. You're just hearing about different things like flashing back and forth. It is just giving you a little 
bit of information when you need it. So I like that. And I'm on page 79 out of 321. So not super far into this yet, but definitely enjoying my listen. And then I definitely made it farther into this this morning. I'm on page 113 now. And I really like this book, you guys. It's not that it's an enjoyable read. It's not um, plotty. It's not, I don't even know how to describe it, right? It's gritty and dark and dirty. Like this girl, like she will talk about things in just a very blunt way. Like for example, um, she will not allow herself to use the bathroom. So we get very like detailed descriptions about those types of things, about her um, like picking her nose and eating it, about clenching her butt cheeks so that she cannot go, like everything like dirty, dirty and that way you can think of is happening. And then there's like, incest-ish scenes like siblings are kissing each other like just because they're curious so my best way of describing what's happening this is all the effing weird things that children do like children just do weird things like children are not afraid of like questioning things or like saying what's on their mind or like doing weird things because what do you know when you're a kid yet and um it's from that like there's like perverse things and like innocence and that's all like I, I just literally don't even like she was trying to make her two frog her two toads mate so she's like rubbing that like pushing them together rubbing them on each other and she thinks that like that's what her parents need to do it's just it's an interesting weird time it's very dark very melancholy very dreary and definitely heavy on the religion aspect um which I can appreciate a lot so this will not be for everyone but I'm enjoying it that's everything I'm reading right now I'm gonna try to read volume eight of Berserk today. I'm gonna to catch up, watch episode two of Obi-Wan while Paul is working. But my mom and dad went on a trip to Holland for their anniversary this weekend and she went to a bookstore because she thought I might like something, which is so sweet. And she wanted to pick me up a Dune book, but she figured I already had them. So she went with this instead, which is like the sweetest gift ever, like literally love it. So I should say first that my mom and sister and I, we would always go to the library in the summertime, I think, and rent all the end of Green Gables movies. And those are some of my favorite things in the whole world, just flashing back to my childhood, watching all of the movies with my mom and Anne and Gil and just like, oh my God, we, we would love to do that. Um, so I really love Anne of Green Gables and so does my mom. She got me this graphic novel version of Anne of Green Gables. So it says adapted by Mariah Marsden, illustrated by Brenna Thumler. And it is like, look at how precious. And my mom being her sweet self wrote in it for me and put the date on it. But to Lucy Maud Montgomery, who reminds us that nothing is more powerful than a girl with an imagination. So the um, color stuff, like it just looks beautiful and adorable and I can't wait to read it. I'm really, really excited. And then I'll show you guys. Okay, so I took all those books back and I knew I wasn't gonna get a ton of money because that's just how it goes when you're getting used books. Um, even if they are new, they obviously have to make a profit from them. So they offered me, I didn't count how many it was, but it was hundreds of dollars of books, I know that. And they offered me $40 cash or $85 store credit. And Paul was like, you might as well use the store credit because that's getting a lot more back. And I was like, but I'm not buying anything to put on my TBR unless I know that I'm gonna read it. So I wasn't going to get anything, but then we passed some manga shelves. So I have my little, little haul bag here. All of those books got me this amount of manga. Kind of scary. First I got this, cause I just saw, if you guys know Billy Bonsai's channel, he just read this. And so I was like, ah, I want that too. And it is Deserter by Junji Ito. Um, I really, really enjoy horror manga a lot. And so this is a collection I do not have by him. It says, a never increasing malice, a mind numbing terror. See the seeds of horror sown in this collection of Junji Ito's earliest works. So, you know, you open it up and immediately horror. Looking forward to this. What else did we get in here? The next thing I got are, because these are expensive. So I thought, you know, perfect timing. I got volume two and volume three of Fruits Basket. So this is volume two. I only own volume one and this is volume three. Um, I don't care what age this manga is for. I really enjoy Fruits Basket. And so, um, so I really wanted to pick up these volumes because the reason I've not continued on is because they are very expensive in these collector's editions. So yeah, so these are new, they're not used, but 
Very, very cute. I almost feel like I want to reread volume one before continuing on. And then I got two more. One, um, I picked up Attack on Titan volume two because I only have volume one and they're so small that I thought maybe I'd like to read them back to back once I get to that. And then I can never find a volume one of this. So I picked up Tokyo Ghoul volume one since it is hard to find. And I opened it up and it just looks very horrific when I was checking it out at the bookstore. So I'm about that. Ghouls live among us, the same as normal people in every way, except they're craving for human flesh. So we'll see, but I'm excited to get to this. So those are the things I got my little mini haul in exchange for getting rid of all of those books from my library, but getting five large manga collector's editions and such for that is fine with me. Um, don't need to be greedy over here. So that is everything that I've been up to the last little while. And I do need to just say quickly, that I got up early this morning, it's Sunday, so that I could watch, well, I was really hungover, but also um, I wanted to watch Call Me By Your Name and I sobbed like through the whole thing. It was so freaking good. Like I can't even describe to you. And I was sort of had mixed feelings part of the way through it. I was like, okay, this is very quiet. I like the quietness, but I don't know if I'm feeling the romance, the obsess obsession and obsessiveness as I did in the book. And while it's not quite the same, it gets more intense and builds on it as you keep going. And I think it was like flawlessly done and it it broke my heart. I definitely cried pretty hard um, throughout parts of it. And it was just so, so good. And the actors did a phenomenal job. And it was interesting watching it. What is his name? Ar Army or Archie? Archie Hammer? What is his name? But the guy who plays Oliver, he narrates the audiobook, but from Elio's POV. So it's a little bit trippy, but it was so good. So I'm just laying here re-watching Heartstopper already again. We did some reading sprints in Patreon. Got my laptop over there. And I just finished Berserk Volume 8, which feels pretty good because I'm checking some things off of the physical TBR already for the month of June. Um, this one had a little bit more political goings on than just like backstory character exploration, but it was still interesting. And well, the way that this one ended, sad, 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 sad and I need to continue on, but I'm out of the volume. So I'll have to wait to save to get more, but um, it was a good one. It was definitely a good one. And I'm kind of distraught. I need to see where the characters are going, like what's gonna happen. Really, really attached to three of the characters. So we'll find out. book babes so we kind of need to end this vlog it's not even thursday yet but it's just getting out of hand it's kind of long i think based on the footage i have so i wanted to wrap up some things this being in the background will literally just like ruin my day um i wanted to wrap up some things before i close out this reading vlog how are you all doing please tell me i hope you're doing wonderful um i finished some things and i've started some more things so i actually don't really want to talk about the things I've started until next week's reading vlog, just so we can kind of keep this cohesive and so that I'm not taking 
too long? You guys should tell me in the comments, how long do you like my reading vlogs? Do you like it 30 to 45, 40 to 50? Or if it's over 50, does that like deter you from clicking on it to watch? I'd love to know. So I've had a rather mediocre reading month so far. I mean, I've enjoyed some of the books I've read well enough, but one more mediocre and then one more that was good, but odd. So let's talk about the one I liked the most first, and that is The Discomfort of Evening. I didn't know what to expect to go into this at all, and I don't want to spend too much time talking about it because I think it's better to just like not know that much before going in, I suppose. But just know that I like gross things. I read horror books. I read disturbing things all the time. And this is like one of the most disturbing things I think I have ever read. It is very detailed in like bodily functions, bodily fluids, and curious sexual nature of children, including sexual acts among siblings. So just keep that in mind. So what this book really was focusing on is the loss of their sibling. The son in this family falls through the ice and dies and how that sort of makes the lives of these children in the family miserable. Of course they miss their brother and the parents just like refuse to talk about him and acknowledge that he's gone. And they also are just completely neglecting the other children. At the same time, they're dealing with the hand, mouth, hand, foot, hand, mouth, hand, foot, mouth. I can't remember what it is, but basically all the cows have to be put down that they own. So that's horribly sad too. There's a lot of not vegan things that you, if you're a vegan, might not want to read about, but it was like fine for me. That didn't like put me off from it or anything like that. Just know that going in, if you are at all sensitive, to anything, just give this a pass because it is so out there, it is so weird, pushes the boundaries of your comfort zone to the max. Like you cannot be <laughs> pushed that much farther than this. So it has a very heavy focus on that curiosity that children have about sexuality, but in a way where they experiment about it with each other. And I wanna say that all of these sexual things are not made to be sexy you are they're not romanticized it's not sexualized in like a appealing way it is simply just a curious way that these children have there's tons of focus on this extremely strict religious upbringing that they have the main character also has this fascination with hitler and speaks about there being jews ha hiding in the basement um so there's a lot going on but in a very subtle way, like this is not a plot novel at all. There's not like events happening that you're waiting to see how they play out. Like it's just literally not. It is about the day-to-day -day lives of these children as their parents aren't caring for them properly. And it was a lot. This passage just says, things just happened, she said. Anything can happen, I think then, but nothing can be prevented. The plan about death and a rescuer, mom and dad who don't lie on top of each other anymore, Obi who is growing out of his clothes faster than mom can learn to wash, learn the washing labels off by heart. And the way not just his body is growing, but also his cruelty, the ticking insects in my belly, which make me rock on top of my teddy bear and get out of bed exhausted, or why we don't have crunchy peanut butter anymore, why the sweets tin has grown a, a mouth with mom's voice in it that says, are you sure you want to do that? Or why dad's arm has become like a traffic barrier. It descends on you whether you want your turn or not, or the Jewish people in the basement that no one talks about like Matthews, are they still alive? I think I also like this passage, it just says, the whole winter we think that you've disappeared, but you're just sitting in the earth under our feet. We people are always visible, even when we want to be invisible. Apart from that, we can do everything you can do. Swim, jump, dig, but we don't find those things as important because we mainly want to do things we can't do. Things we have to spend ages learning at school while I'd rather be able to swim or dig myself into the mud and let two seasons go by. But maybe the most important difference between you and me is that you don't have any parents anymore or you don't see them. So it is extremely sad and heartbreaking when it comes to the discussion about like how the parents treat the child. And like I said, there's definitely animal abuse in this, but I really loved the writing. Like I was very shocked. I would absolutely read from this author again. I wait there until the stairs stop creaking and then I close the curtains, try to think of my rescuer so that the oppressive feeling around my stomach disappears, making way for a longing, a longing that birds can best express. I notice that my bed creaks with every movement and that this means my parents 
parents must know what I get up to in the night. I stand up on my mattress to put the rope hanging from the beam in the attic around my neck. It's too loose. I can't move the knot. It's been tied for too long. But for a moment, I wrap it around my neck like a scarf, feeling the rough fibers against my skin. I imagine what it would be like to slowly suffocate, to be a swing and know and to know which movements are expected of you, to feel the life glide out of me the way I feel a little bit when I'm lying on the sofa butt naked being a soap dish. And she says that because she purposely won't let herself go to the bathroom, so her dad puts soap up her behind um, to help her with that. So there were definitely more passages that I tabbed, but I won't read you guys more. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of the tone of the book, but I absolutely love the end. Freaking love the end. I... I'm surprised this was a prize winner for the International Booker because of how unsettling and disturbing it is, but maybe that's what they're looking for. But I I really love this book. Like, it feels weird to say that about something that is so um, unsettling and disturbing and gross at times and just about taboo things, but it made you think a lot and consider a lot of things. And I really think this author has a lot of talent and I really appreciated it. And I think that's a bit of an unpopular opinion, even for a prize winning book, because most people hate this book that I've encountered. The other one that I'm going to wrap up before I sign off is, um, Animal by Lisa Tadeo. And I'm so sad because as I said, Paul bought me this book too. And I did not like the paper palace and I just really don't recommend this book. Um, it started out pretty strong to be honest, but it really went downhill for me. And I think that it was just a mess. I think the author could not clearly formulate this timeline in the way that she wanted to have the story unfold and talk about these events that were taking place and so it just felt very messy and it didn't always seem like it was the best chronological order to reveal things in and while that wasn't the case at the very beginning the farther we got into the book the more that it felt that way so honestly I don't think I would read from this author again if you have read three women please let me know um because that's the other book that I'm interested in by her but I just don't know because I didn't particularly care for the writing in this book either I hated Joan, the main character, more than words can say. I absolutely hate her. I think she's detestable. She has no redeeming qualities and I feel bad for her events that she has been through in her life, which of course have had an effect on the outcome of who she is and what she chooses to do with her life. It's not an excuse, but of course that helps to shape you into who you are. I really think that there was so much missed potential with the story, but honestly, I'm, I'm sick and tired right now of the story of the unhinged women killing men. It just, it has its time and place, and I, I have read too much of it recently personally, and that's my fault, I suppose. I've burnt myself out with it, and so I think a book like that once a month or every now and again is okay, but I read like four or five of them last month, and then reading another one this month, and I just... I don't know. It was, it was, I'm, I'm kind of bored of that trope right now. So let me know if I go to pick up a book, book like that in the future and warn me in advance if I'm not aware that that's what it is. But I will say the one commentary I liked in this book, which was kind of present throughout it, was the way that women are used or the way that women use men because it goes both way and ways. And this specifically is talking a lot about a woman who is taking advantage of men for her own gain and playing this role. I appreciate that we sort of went over that because obviously I don't like things that always make women seem innocent or men seem innocent. I need a realistic portrayal that it goes both ways and it doesn't matter your gender. I always like that. But then also at the same time, there was the commentary about sexual assault and rape in this. And then there's a lot of discussion and commentary about the rape that you get ready and do your makeup for because it's harder to say no than it is to just let the man do what he's trying to do for a myriad of reasons why a woman might feel pressured into doing something that she unwillingly consents to and so it's not actually consensual sex it is the rape that you get dressed up for there's so much more nuance to that conversation than that brief little bit i just said but that is the one thing that I liked how this book discussed when I haven't seen it in a lot of other books I've read recently, I suppose. So do let me know about Three Women. I'm, I don't regret reading it. It was entertaining. It was never boring. Um, and I mean, I liked hearing about what was happening. I just think the book itself and the writing was just all over the place. 
And like I said, I hated the character. And if I can't find any redeeming qualities or at least find them, like I've read unhinged female murderers that are terrible people that I can still root for because the way that they're written is something that like there's some likable aspect and this character doesn't have that for me. Um, but yeah, so entertaining, do with that what you will. I don't highly recommend it. I think there are better books out there in this specific niche as well. But yeah, so these are the last two things I finished up. I really did finish up a lot of things in this reading blog, I feel like. And we did a lot of things and had a busy time and life never slows down. Had to cancel reading sprints last night to go to a graduation that was last minute. And so tired, tired, tired. But yeah, if you have made it to this point in the vlog. Give me the cow emoji. Um, if you can see the little cow on the side or there's some cows on the back because there's a lot of cows in this book. So cow emoji if you've made it this far and I hope you guys are having a lovely Friday and that your weekend will be spectacular and you'll get lots of reading done or lots of rest or lots of fun activities. Thank you guys for watching per usual. Love you lots and I'll see you guys next time.